You've got it tuned to KEXP. We're listener-powered radio at 90.3 FM in Seattle, online around the world at kexp.org. And so delighted to have Rokia Traore live today. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. It's such a treat, and your new album is beautiful. But you've been making music for a very long time, and I'm so excited to talk with you. But would you start with a song? Pleasure. Muso sarama ne muso dambe ne muso kimbe ba mako. Baka kene muso ne giper muso ne nini dona ba ba mako. Ali nya la tema sini sabe. Ali ya la nyinta ma sinya la goya. That was incredible. Rokia Traore live here in the KEXP studios. We are just overjoyed to have you here today. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. You have a new album out called Beautiful Africa, and tonight you play at the Triple Door here in Seattle, which is a gorgeous venue to showcase your beautiful sound. You have come from a very, very rich musical tradition, so much beautiful music in Mali. I know you've traveled extensively. Can you tell me a little bit about the beginnings of music for you, your enjoyment and discovery of it as you grew up, and how you started to play and become a performer? Yes, certainly the fact that I am from Mali is, yes, means um, a, a lot in my career and, and the kind of music I am trying to, to do since the beginning. Uh, but I don't have a direct uh, a traditional musical training in Mali. I, I've started music, listened to music with my dad, who used to be part of the a national orchestra. That's why I say anyhow there's a connection between my career and uh, Mali and music in Mali. And he, he stopped uh, because he had to go uh, abroad 
for his studies to become a diplomat. And I haven't uh, known him as a musician. I wasn't born yet. And uh, yes, but the, the fact he uh, loved music, even though he stopped uh, as a professional, meant that he, he used to ha have an interest in anything music and culture, theater and everything. And for him, uh, culture and music and arts in general are uh, a kind of uh, means of education to uh, learn about the rest of the world. Uh, through music, it's the, the 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 best way he used to say, and for him, uh, listen to music with me and also with the my brothers and sisters, and uh, uh, talking with us about uh, different styles of music, jazz music, European classical music, and Malian and African music, was yes for him a a, a, a way to communicate with us and give offer us a, a, an education, and uh, um, he didn't, um, uh, I mean, he, he couldn't imagine that uh, he's pushing me uh, uh, toward a, 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 a musical, I mean, a professional career as a musician. And when I decided to stop my studies and go back to Mali and, and start uh, this f project, which was the first of my career with traditional Malian uh, instruments, he was really d disappointed. And I, I am, yes, I, I am, it's somewhere uh, this mix of uh, Africa and Europe because of, of the fact I've been traveling, be, I've been back and forth between Africa and Europe all my childhood and teenagehood long. And uh, this is also the way I make music. I cannot make Malian tra traditional music because I haven't learned that. But uh, uh, I, there, this is part of me. And when I b decided to learn guitar, it was because of uh, uh, the, the rock music I used to listen to with my bro uh, elder brother. And uh, uh, in the same time, of course, musicians like Salif Keita, Musangare, and uh, some over uh, not known here, but really uh, talentful, are part of my inspiration. And also African musicians like Fela Kuti, Sorikan Diakuyate, or Miriam Makeba, and many, many of them not known here, uh, are part of my uh, background and musical uh, education. So yes, th th I do make I try to make the music I imagine, and for me, music a, a career is a question of project. Uh, I stopped the, the one I started my career with because I've done three albums with this project, and I've been touring for eight years with it, and uh, I no longer had nothing to try or to to prove to myself, and no curiosity about this project, and I I I, I wanted to start something new, which is uh, this project now. Uh, I started with the, the previous album Chamanche, and uh, I'm continuing with uh, Beautiful Africa. I do want to talk about that album. It is so lovely. But can you play another song first? Of course. <laughs> Nemana 
Kia Traore live here in studio at KEXP. Tonight she plays at the Triple Door here in Seattle. I'm not surprised to hear you tell me that you have such a wide influence of music and musical styles. You also play a variety of instruments. You sound beautiful on that guitar and your voice is your most powerful instrument, but you also play traditional instruments, and they appear quite a bit on Beautiful Africa, your newest album. Can you tell me about that album, both the music on it, the making of it, and the stories that you're telling? Uh, the, the music is, uh, most of the songs are about my joy of uh, uh, living again in Mali, having a house there, and having, yes, this Malian culture, which is mine originally, uh, 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 all around me. And... Uh, then the, the, the cries started in the north of uh, the country. Uh, a long time after I uh, finished with uh, all the composition and uh, ly- lyrics and uh, rehearsals, and we were getting ready in uh, March to go for a tour in Italy with some youngsters I work with in the framework of my foundation. And then after uh, that, we were supposed to come back to Mali and welcome the European part of the band and some of our young musicians from London for a project we, we were creating with the foundation and the Barbican Center in London. So, you know, all these things, you simply think, okay, there are uh, things to do in Mali. We, we have to go ahead and bring projects there for young musicians. And uh, yes, I, I I used to trust and I still trust in uh, uh, what I could bring as a contribution to the development of the country in general and uh, uh, particularly to the development of music industry where I am the most uh, useful. And uh, yes, then that happened and changed everything. And we have, we, we had to uh, reschedule things and make things in a way uh, everything uh, could be, I mean, yes, some things could be saved and not uh, follow the, the general destruction of uh, the, the, all around me, you know. That happens so suddenly. And even 
as a Malian, if I, even though I knew that there were problems, uh, there were a very difficult, complicated uh, social, political situation, I would never imagine what happened. And it happened, and then in two weeks, more than half of the country uh, 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 was uh, uh, occupied by some extremists. And uh, it's, it's not like a nightmare, but you cannot stop. Life is still going and uh, you, you have to follow. You, you cannot let everything because there's a war in your country. And I was uh, lucky to be in a, in a part of Mali where uh, uh, we, of course, uh, could... Uh, um, we, we were affected by the, the economical uh, situation and all the, the rest of the bad uh, 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 things happening because there was a half of the country uh, w was occupied. But yes, I, I, I was uh, in a better situation than those in the north, so we had to continue. And it's in this kind of... Uh, in the same time, you, you don't know where courage will come from, where you're going to have the, the enough strength to continue and uh, the trust in yourself and in all the things you used to trust in and, and keep going on. And in the same time, you have to anyhow. So it's very uh, difficult to talk uh, about it. It's, it's such a, a profound uh, uh, shock that there's no words, uh, there are no words enough uh, strong and clear to explain what I felt uh, and, uh, and how I, I, I was when that happened. But eventually we could manage to keep the projects not as we imagined them, but in a way we, we could work and continue providing work to all these young uh, artists who, who were uh, involved in the, the, the project with the Barbican Center. And I could uh, con uh, make my rehearsals and rehearsal with all the youngsters in France instead of Mali, which has a cost. And, uh, uh, Eventually, uh, the, uh, July happened, and <laughs> we could uh, start recording the album. And there's a kind of energy you don't, you're not a kind of conscient about what we are doing, but we are doing it. it there, you know, the no sleep in night, no sleeping <laughs> in day, and you are still awake and able. And you sometimes wonder how it can be possible. And then, at the end of the recording. Uh, I, yes, I, I, I was um, willing to question myself about what happened. And also the, the media, international media, started to talk about, say about what is going on in the north of Mali. And not always in the right way. Sometimes you, I could hear some things uh, uh, which were, wrong enough to make me not recognizing my country and what they were to telling about. I, I was there and I haven't feel things the way they, the, the very well-trained people uh, were explaining uh, 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 the, what happened in Mali. So anyhow, all, all these things made that, yes, you start to question about what you're hearing on medias and what happened and how you feel and what you think. And then I wanted to write a lyric. And uh, I, I wrote Beautiful Africa because myself, I, it was difficult to understand for myself why I, I still trust in this country and this continent where everything is a kind of, yes, complicated. Mali is one of the, the, was one of the most positive country and uh, 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 n nobody could imagine what happened and it happened. But I still trust in the country and my ability to uh, make changes, not uh, uh, every change everything, but uh, my small contribution as the small contribution of each Malian, each African can make changes in Africa and in Mali. And this is beautiful Africa. I think Africa is beautiful. I think even where uh, there's a war, where things are complicated, where uh, there's poverty, is someone's home. And Mali is mine. And I, I have no problem with that.
I still have my house there and I live to tour as I used to uh, these last f five years since I moved back there and I'm going back there at the end of the tour still trusting in the country and uh, people there and also myself and my ability to uh, 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 be part uh, of those who are going to make changes. When I hear about your experience and your country, it's no wonder that the album is so powerful. And you say that Mali is a positive country, and even though there is so much strife and nightmare, as you say, it is a very positive album. And Yes, it is. What, what else? You know, you fear bad things before they happen. And once they happen, uh, what else to fear about? It's simply that. We, we used to have everything there in Mali because of uh, poverty, very difficult uh, conditions uh, of life. That's what I sing in Sarama. For me, African women, Malian women are simply a k kind of w the iron women and the, it, with, uh, 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 without any conscience about what they face every day and how hard the life of every day is. I can see it and I can understand it because uh, I have this double culture and I, I'm absolutely impressed by them and they are really a source of inspiration. And I could have, I had a choice to, to move uh, uh, my son, for example, from Mali to France for his schooling that year. But most of people uh, were there, most of my relatives and friends couldn't, didn't have this choice. So I'm lucky. And uh, I, yes, it's a, I continue to not understand myself because I'm surprised by uh, the, the, the fact I, I, I am still positive and it's really sincere uh, despite uh, all the, the things uh, which happened. But yes, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's in, we have to see things in, in a positive side. Maybe these countries in Africa in general are unbelievably uh, uh, difficult and difficult to understand for people in developed countries how people there can l live every day. But the positive thing is that we are definitely strong and uh, we appreciate real life because uh, we have so many problems that to be able to continue, you must be conscious that the simple fact of uh, breathing every day and seeing sunset and uh, uh, sun r r rise every day is already something great. So what else do you want? So we are in a state there. Uh, we can still think of these very basic things. And this is a positive side. The new album is Beautiful Africa, very inspirational and very powerful. And we're so happy you're here today playing songs from that. You have another one from the, the new record? One. Dear 
Rokia Traore live here in the KEXP studios tonight. You'll be at the Triple Door. Thank you again so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. So wonderful to meet you. You're listening to KEXP Seattle. 